Okay. So tonight, this is what we're talking about. Tonight, we're talking about ambition and the desire to succeed. Okay, that's really what ambition is. I'll tell you what we're not talking about. We are not talking about success. We are talking about having the desire to succeed. It's very different, okay? We have a class on success coming up in maybe like one or two weeks' time, something like that, hopefully, okay? So, I have, what I do? Four. I have like... My four top points that I want to get through tonight, and these are very, very practical, very grounded, very, very things which you can take into your office or into your school or wherever it is tomorrow. Last week was very up in the air, okay? Last week was like big thinking, okay? So this week I want to bring it back down a little bit and squish it down a bit and make it like very, very practical. So... We're going to start like this. Interestingly enough, last week, the core phrase that I kept coming back to was a phrase, Bishvili Nivrei Olam. Who remembers what that means? The world is created for me. Beautiful. The world is created for me. The whole world is created for me. Right? That was the phrase that we, we, that we focused on last week, and we started with the question, well, that sounds a little bit selfish. Right? That sounds a little bit selfish. How can it be? And we explained it out that really what it means is, it means the whole world was created for me, so step up and take responsibility. Step up and say, okay, if the whole world is created for me, then it's me who, it's me who really has the responsibility to step up and solve whatever problems I see in front of me. So I actually want to start with that idea this week. I want to start with something which I have to tell you. Actually, side point. I think I say this now every single week, and I just think that it's helpful for me to hear it at least. Every time I teach, it's basically like personal therapy, okay? It's like, you are all my therapists, and I just speak. So I work very, very hard to only teach things that I am either very, very strongly working on or have achieved. I don't teach stuff that I'm not into or not doing. I'm not a hypocrite, okay? So this is, and when it's something that I'm working on, I will actually outright say this is something that I'm working on, okay? So of these things, I would say that this is definitely the biggest one that I'm working on of these four points, and that is the following. Bishvili Nivri Olam, the whole world was created for me. So stop being bothered by what everyone else is doing and just focus on what you are doing, Right? How many times do we sit there, you know, looking across the office? Oh, I can't believe that that person is involved in this. Oh, I can't believe that they got the promotion. Oh, I cannot believe that they got awarded the contract. Or I cannot believe that they got the perfect GPA this, and not me, right? I can't believe that they passed that course and I only, you know, like this constant worry about what everyone else is doing. It's really, really hard to kind of pull that aside, but as women, we do it all the time. The problem is that when we do it, it doesn't motivate us. Unlike men, when a man sees someone else getting what he wants, what does a man do? He works so much harder. When a woman sees someone else getting what they want. What do we do? If we're nice. Try and bring them down. I don't know that we do that. I, that, that. That's quite harsh. What else? What else do we do? Or secretly want to. Do you know what? I don't know that very many people do that. I know that I don't do that. What else? Complain about it. Or just be envious, right? Instead of, instead of the action being it motivating us, our action is usually, if we're, if, if we're really motivated, revenge. But I don't, I don't think that's so common, right? <laughs> I know, you're the one who brought it up. Like, okay? Right. Right. 
Our action, our action isn't to do something to improve ourselves. Our action is 99% of the time when we some, see someone else achieving is to let that bring us down and we just take our energy and pour it into being frustrated and bitchy and stabbing other, stabbing other people in the back, right? But none of that actually helps us and makes us do anything, right? The Jewish principle here is bishvili nivrei olam. Stop being bothered by other people because the world was created for you. Worry about what you are doing. Be focused on what you are doing, right? Oh, everyone else can go and do what everyone else is doing. It's not going to take away or add to what you're doing if you choose to do nothing, right? Just don't use it as a, don't use it as a, a counterfeit to putting in effort, right? Like this. Rabbi Noah Weinberg, who's my, who is, who is my, my Rebbe, basically he said, he said that every single pleasure in this world has a counterfeit, right? So the counterfeit pleasure of love, right? Love is a great pleasure, right? When you're in love, feels good, right? The counterfeit is lust, okay? Being in lust with someone. It's incredibly, incredibly powerful, right? It's a very powerful emotion, and it feels kind of like love. But it kind of peters away. It's not permanent. It's not sticking. It doesn't stay. And it usually starts with a bang and kind of fizzles out, right? Whereas love in Judaism starts and all it does is grow. Like my husband said to me on my wedding day, right? He said, Hannah, I want you to know, today is the day that I love you the least. And I was like, great. You know, I'm standing there in my white dress. I have spent literally hours on my hair and my makeup and everything, right? And here, today is the day I love you the least. I'm like, okay, you better have a good rabbi answer for this, okay? You better have a good one. What? Oh, it's going to phone in. Okay. You better. <laughs> that is how much girls want to hear the class. There you go. Right? She's phoning from California also. Um. So that, that is, that is uh, I was like, you better have a very good rabbi answer to that. And he said like this, he said, because every single day that we're married, I'm going to love you a little bit more. I was like, bingo, that's why I married an age rabbi, yay, right? But what we have is every single pleasure in this world, we have a counterfeit for it. So when we're talking about this idea of being bothered by other people, if if another person is a motivator, right, the pleasure would be being motivated by someone else's success, which is a very, very male trait. It's not that there are no women who do it, but it just happens to be that it's a very, very male trait to be motivated by other people. It's something which most men, most men have naturally. And everything, everything, is, a, everything is a bell curve, right? So to split people up and say, you are a woman and you only act like this, or you are a man and you only act like that, is a bit of a fallacy, because I'm sure you've met tomboys, right? Girls who really, really act like boys, and I'm sure you've met incredibly metrosexual boys, boys who very, very much act, act have a lot of female character traits. I'm not going to say act like girls, because they wouldn't like that, right? But have a lot of female character traits, right? So this is just a very, very male character trait, to be motivated by the success of other people. What we do is we, we have a counterfeit for that motivation. Our counterfeit is bitchiness. Our counterfeit is let me stab you in the back. Let me talk about it. Let me moan about it. Let me go away and be frustrated about it. It feels like we're doing something, but are we actually doing anything? We are doing nothing. In fact, in fact, not only are we doing nothing, maybe we are doing something. What happens when you're bitchy and you stab people, other people in the back and a little bit snidey behind their back. Is that going to increase your opportunity to succeed? No. It is only going to bring you down. Right? You're only going to end up in a situation worse than you were before. Because now, no one on your team wants to talk to you. Now, no one wants to be around the girl who has bad attitude. Right? No one wants to be that. So, the first idea, and it's very, very, very hard, the first idea is if you do not have the character trait of being motivated by someone else's success, you do not have that character trait, then 
at least stop being bothered by everyone else. Bishvili Nivre Olam, the whole world was created for me, means be focused on you and what you can do. Stop being bothered by what everyone else is getting up to. Okay? It's, I have to tell you, it's very, very hard. Do not get me wrong. I say it like it's like, just stop. It's obvious, right? It's so obvious. Okay? Yet, if someone runs a women's class on a Monday night, with material like mine. Oh, does my husband hear about it, right? Oh, does my husband. I'm like this, and like this, and like this, despite the fact that probably not a single person that I know would choose that class over my class, right? Despite the fact that it could be up in Thornhill or like on the other side of the planet, it really does not matter because it's Monday nights. Monday night, do you understand how hard I work, right? Am I actually doing anything? Am I improving my class in any way by having like a two-hour bitch fest at my husband as to how someone else is doing something which I'm doing? No. I'm going to have to listen to this class afterwards. You know, like definitely over and over again. Okay, that is the first idea. Bishvili Nivriolam. 